uh, as uh, mm, it's a fact that human body has uh, more than a trillion cells quadrillion bacteria are occupying the spaces on the human body so this is a uh, this is a uh, uh, these are the bacteria which are occupying the nose, mouth, pharynx, larynx, trachea, skin, and the intestine. What is a parasite? When bacteria live in association with living things, and they are dependent on them for nutrients and a suitable environment. Saprophytes are bacteria that live on dead or decaying organic matter. Pathogenic bacteria, when we talk about pathogenic bacteria, then that means those bacteria that are causing harm to the host or causing disease. Uh, to the host. Normal flora or commensals, bacteria carried by man in large number. They are useful for man by occupying places on body which can be taken up by disease causing bacteria or pathogenic bacteria. What if this normal flora is killed? Then it, the useful bacteria, if it is killed in the mouth, fungal infections may occur. Uh, if it is killed in the intestine, then diarrhea may occur. Now, uh, before long it was called normal flora but now the term has changed and uh, we do not use this term flora anymore and the correct term microbiota is used now it denotes what is normal microbial flora denotes a population of microorganisms that inhabit the skin and mucous membrane of healthy normal persons and they permanently occupy certain body sites like skin or pharynx colon and vagina they have a friendly relationship with the host until some conditions prevail. Viruses, protozoa and helminths, they are not considered to be members of the normal flora because in any case they are causing disease in a human. So they are basically pathogens. So this is an electron microscopic picture of uh, a skin. Uh, you can see the skin pores here and a uh, bacteria which is sitting on the surface of the skin. It may be pathogenic but uh, it may be a normal flora. Now, a microbe can cause, uh, when it is interacting with the human, it can cause disease, it can cause a transient colonization. That means for a little bit of time, it may reside on the uh, human or it may be a permanent resident on the body. Now, disease by the microbes may be due to microbial characteristics, that means factors, or it can be due to human factors. Now, what is colonization by microbe? It is acquisition of a new organism. Infection is another term which is used for colonization, so the, it may not imply disease, but rather the association of the microbe with the human host for a time. So this means that colonization by a microbe means that a microbe may be acquired by a human, but it may not cause an infection or disease. It may be it may be causing infection, but not showing the symptoms of the disease. Transient colonization, which is based on the duration of interaction for weeks, months or years. Now transient flora, they are pet, pet, potentially pathogenic microorganisms. They inhabit the skin or mucous membrane for hours, days or weeks. They do not establish permanently on the skin surface, they sporadically multiply on the skin surface. For example, those that are acquired by healthcare workers, Staph aureus, Micrococci, Diphtheroids, Streptococci, and gram negative with fly. Resident flora, normal flora, they are fixed types of microorganisms regularly found and residing on, under the superficial cells of the skin. And if they are disturbed, they are promptly they reestablish themselves. For example, Staph epidermidis, Propioni bacterium, and Corony bacterium. They do not have any pathogenic effect on the skin. So this is just a picture showing a resident bacteria which is there residing for uh, these are the permanent resident on the skin. There is the transient bacteria. They may uh, stay on, on, on the host but then they uh, leave the host. Now the, the normal flora have, may have a symbiotic relation with the host. It can have an opportunistic relation with the host or it can have no effect or they are known as commensals. Symbionts usually benefit the person infected, for example, bacteria in the intestine, they assist in the synthesis of vitamin K and some vitamin of the B complex. Opportunists, as the opportunity arises, they become pathogens like Candida, which is a fungus, Clostridium difficile. 
or if a commensal or normal flora they leave the usual habitat and they enter enter another part of the body where it can establish itself and cause disease like e coli is a normal inhabitant of the intestinal tract but when it enters the urinary tract it can cause urinary tract infection commensals a largest group of the normal microbial flora and these are the places where it can stay and they are neither beneficial nor harmful to the host but they can protect by competing with the potential pathogens now carrier state is uh, something else which is uh, this different different from normal flora an individual may harbor a potential pathogens and therefore it can be a source of infection for others for example a person with an asymptomatic infection it may have the pathogenic organism which may not be affecting the individual or he may have recovered from a disease but that individual carries the organism and may shed it for a long period of time for example salmonella typhi a person who is infected with salmonella typhi may have that bacteria after recover, recovery in in its gall bladder and it may secrete that uh, excrete out that bacteria and cause infection to other humans or typhoid to other humans so this is a picture depicting the importance of normal flora here the white ovals they are the normal flora they do not allow the pathogenic bacteria which is the black ovals to come and invade uh, the mucosal cells or the skin of the host but when this normal flora is disrupted due to any factors which are written here then these um, pathogen pathogens then they come and reside on the mucosal surface of the skin when do normal flora become opportunist when there are these are the several factors in the host like malnutrition recurrent infection immunosuppressives for organ transplant recipients advanced hiv infection chemotherapy for cancer skin damage antibiotic treatment for a prolonged period of time pregnancy aging leukopenia opportunistic they are also called nosocomial infection which are acquired in the hospital setup site of normal flora respiratory tract and head these are the sites but the sterile sites of the respiratory tract are sinuses middle ear brain lower respiratory tract these sites they do not contain any kind of flora git these are the sites having a uh, normal flora the right renal system uh, the sterile sites are bladder cervix and uterus role of normal flora in the skin um, mostly uh, when the skin is dry it does not support the growth of normal microorganisms but moist areas may uh, be readily colonized by gram positive bacteria significance of normal flora protective hai does not allow the pathogen to reside and uh, um, so this is the skin surface which is uh, have a, which have a covering of normal flora and if it it is removed then the pathogen have an opportunity to come and invade it so this is how you protect against the pathogens pros and cons of having normal flora it prevents colonization by pathogens secrete these vitamins and b12 stimulate antibody mediate immune response kill the pathogens and inhibit the pathogens of production of enzyme but this advantage of now having normal flora they can act as opportunistic pathogens when the conditions ar- arise in the host gain access to sterile sites share nutrients and drug resistance with the pathogens may be a source of infection to other individuals so these are the normal flora this is the uh, staph epidermidis aureus um aureus um it is not a normal flora it may reside it is a colonizer especially in the nose but uh, you cannot see that it's a normal flora it's basically it's a pathogen epidermidis is a normal flora propionic bacterium acnes which is the cause of acne vulgaris candida skin infection so important points that uh, they are permanent residents of the body microbiota and uh, viruses protozoa helminths are not normal flora and they inhabit the body surfaces does not allow the pathogen to 